The PSP's first proposed safeguard is to legislatively require that sitting Supreme Court judges sit on the advisory committees. While we note that Minister Shamugam said in 2018 that advisory committees will be chaired by sitting judges of the Supreme Court of Singapore, the government stopped short of codifying this change. The PSP is of the view that we must codify this requirement to uphold the separation of powers, provide greater clarity for all, and strengthen the perception that the advisory committees are independent. We believe that there is no downside to this. The PSP's second proposed safeguard relates to the making of detention orders and police supervision orders. Besides the public prosecutor's consent, the minister must also seek either one, the advisory committee's concurrence, or two, the concurrence of the president acting in his discretion before the detention order or police sub supervision order is made. The PSP's third proposed safeguard relates to the extension of the detention orders or police supervision orders. If an advisory committee objects to the extension of the detention order or police supervision order, and the government disagrees, any extension should only be granted with the president's concurrence, acting in his discretion. The reason why we are proposing the second and third safeguards is because the ultimate decision maker currently is still cabinet. While the minister must hear the advisory committee's views and recommendations via its written report to the president, the minister does not need to follow those recommendations before making or renewing the detention order or police supervision order. Since the president does not have discretionary powers under the CLTPA and must follow cabinet's recommendations. The PSP believes that these three proposals will strike the appropriate balance between personal liberty and public peace and order. Mr. Leong Wan Wai has suggested additional safeguards to the Act. We note all that he said. The current safeguards are carefully considered and we, explain, we have explained several times why this structure works for us. We have explained why MHA acting with the minister and with the advisory structures is the best structure and has kept law and order. It seems that they are not able to point to any abuse of the system. Singapore is ranked number one in law and order. I think what is key is let's stop pursuing theory and just ask whether it has worked or has not worked for us. If it has worked and there are no obvious flaws, then we must ask what we are trying to change. On the issue of the president, the responsibility for law and order lies with the government, not the president. The president is there in specific respects as identified in the constitution. Beyond that, the president has no executive power. And if something goes wrong with law and order, it is the government that is accountable to the people. We have an executive that answers to parliament. In specific circumstances, the president has powers to veto, but law and order is an executive responsibility, not the president's responsibility. Therefore, we do not agree with this suggestion. <laughs>